G'day everyone! Here at PsyQ, we love drugs. Just check out our dozens of pro-drug videos. My favourites are linked in the description. But one group of drugs that we're worried about are opioids, like heroin and fentanyl. Just today, it's expected that more than 140 Americans will die of an opioid overdose, which means more dead Americans than from gun deaths, the AIDS crisis at its peak, and car crashes combined. And that sucks because we here at PsyQ also like Americans. In fact, liking Americans and being worried about opioids are two of the only things that we at PsyQ have in common with President Trump. Trump recently said, we are currently dealing with the worst drug crisis in American history. And six months ago, he promised to declare a public emergency on opioids. And since then, he's done basically nothing. And so tired of waiting for Trump, the US Surgeon General has denounced a national advisory on opioids. The first national advisory since 2005. But it's not what you think. So the United States Surgeon General is best known as the person who advises you not to do stuff that's fun. In 1965, he, cause it's always a he, put that little warning on cigarettes. In 1988, he put a similar warning on alcohol and told us to stop having unprotected sex. And most recently in 2005, he told pregnant women to stop drinking alcohol because clearly those pregnant women had already had enough fun. Surgeon General Jamone Adams announced that we should all carry naloxone, also known as Narcan, the drug that helps reverse opioid overdoses. And that's great! Having naloxone on hand could prevent many of those opioid related deaths, which is great news. An overdose of an opioid causes you to have slowed breathing or even to stop breathing and naloxone reverses that. Surgeon General Adams said, we should think of naloxone like an EpiPen or CPR. Basically, it's a great way to reverse a bad situation. But the problem is that carrying around naloxone doesn't solve the root cause of the problem. And even the Surgeon General says so. In the official advisory, he lists the increasing number of individuals receiving higher doses of prescription opioids as a big part of the problem. Even when taking their pain medication as prescribed, these patients are at an increased risk of accidental overdose. Basically, the problem is that more people are taking more opioids. So why all this fuss about naloxone? Why not get to the root of the problem? Make it so that less people get less opioids. And here's where it gets political. Just like with guns, there's big money in making opioids. But don't listen to me, I can't even vote here. What would I know? Why don't we get our information from the President of the United States? You have the drug companies. They contribute massive amounts of money to political people. I don't know, Mitch, maybe even to you. But I have to tell you, they contribute massive amounts of money. Me, I'm not interested in their money. Ah, Trump, he's absolutely right. That guy looking awkward on his right was Mitch McConnell, Senate Majority Leader. He personally received hundreds of thousands of dollars of campaign contributions from drug manufacturers, which is probably why he looks so awkward. But he's not alone. 97 out of the 100 US senators have taken contributions from pharmaceutical companies. In fact, the pharmaceutical industry spends far more than any other industry to influence politicians. They spent $152 million on influencing legislation in 2016, and they have two lobbyists for every member of Congress. They directly donated $200 million to political campaigns in 2016. Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, accepted the most, over a quarter of a million dollars in that year alone. But let's not beat up too much on Republicans, they only took about 60% of that money. Democrats accepted their fair share too. And those political donations are one of the reasons why you now need a coupon from Costco just to follow the Surgeon General's advice and buy a two pack of naloxone injections for the low, low price of $3,732. In 1996, a 10 mil vial of naloxone costs just $1.63. Now, if you want to clip that coupon, a link is below. 
Now, unlike President Trump, we're actually serious about fighting the opioid crisis here at PsyQ. So the very first link below is a list of places where you can buy naloxone. And below that is a link to the naloxone finder where you can hopefully get the drug for free. As always, I'd love to get your views on the opioid crisis. Personal side note, I have two direct family members who need painkillers to treat very serious, very chronic, painful illnesses. So simple solutions like ban opioids aren't really useful solutions. But I know there are many solutions out there that are useful, and if President Trump won't discuss them, we will. So record your ideas in the comments below. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching PsyQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.